died in 1802. From that marriage, he had two older children, Roberto and Elena. Since 1796, Nicolo Solomos had a parallel relationship with his housekeeper, Angeliki Nikli, who gave birth to Dionysius and his younger full brother, Dimitrios. His father married Dionysius's mother a day before he died in February of 1807, making the nine-year-old Dionysius legitimate and the co-heir to the Count's estate along with his older half-brother. Okay. The poet spent his childhood years on Zakynthos until 1808 under the supervision of his Italian tutor, Abbot Santorossi. After his father's death, Count Dionysius Messalas gained Solomos's custody, whereas his mother married a different man, Manolis Leontarakis, in August of 1807. In 1808, Messalas sent Solomos to Italy to study law, as it was customary with the Ionian nobility, but possibly also because of Dionysius's mother's new marriage. After finishing high school in Cremona in November 1815, Solomon was enrolled at Pavia University's Faculty of Law, from which he graduated in 1817. Given the interest of the young poet showed in the flourishing Italian literature and being a perfect speaker of Italian, he started writing poems in Italian, such as the Ode per la Prima Messa, Ode to the First Mass, and La Distruzione di Gerusalemme, The Destruction of Jerusalem. In the meantime, he acquainted himself with famous Italian poets and novelists. The accomplished Italian poet Ugo Foscolo, whom we will see later on in this presentation, a half-Greek from Zakynthos, was among his friends. As a result, he was easily accepted in the Italian literary circles and evolved into a promising poet of the Italian language. Here's the beginning of the Ode in Italian, a description of the creation of the sun. Ed inondò di lume gli spazi interminabili, caldo del cenno onnipotente, il sol. You can see the Greek and English translation as well. Viewing the Italian, mainly religious poems, in the light of Solomos's subsequent performance, it becomes clear that it was not the imagery of Christianity nor the tongue of Italy that was to make the poet. So, after 10 years of studies, Solomos returned to Zakynthos in 1818 with a solid background on literature. On Zakynthos, which at that time was well known for its flourishing literary culture, the poet acquainted himself with people interested in literature. Antonius Matesis, the subsequent author of the seminal play Basilikos, Georgios Tercetis, the judge who many years later did not sign the European Regency induced death penalty of Greek independence war leader and hero Kolokotronis, and Dionysius Tagapieras, a physician and supporter of the demotic form of Greek, were some of Solomos's most well-known friends. They used to gather in each other's homes and amuse themselves by making up poems and satires. His improvised Italian poems during that period of time were published in 1822 under the title Rime Improvisate. But wild parties taught him something else, the practice of excessive drinking. In this particular, Solomos provides but one example of a fault to which the romantic temperament was singularly prone. Other examples including, of course, Lord Byron, Edgar Allan Poe, Paul Verlaine, and Italy's national poet, Josue Carducci. Solomos contracted a weakness for the Verdea, a delicious but powerful white wine of local production, and in later life, after his migration to Corfu, he would consume it in enormous quantities. In his youth, he made many resolves to conquer the habit. One evening, armed with a bottle, he went to the end of the jetty, delivered a farewell oration to the beverage, and flung the bottle into the sea. The result of this eminently Byronic gesture is variously recorded. Some say he adhered to his resolution until an epidemic of cholera visited the island, whereat the medical men prescribed Verdea as preventive and cure. After this setback, Solomos never fought his craving again. Along with Italian poems during the 1820s on Zakynthos, Solomos made his first attempts to write in Greek. 
This was a difficult task for the young poet since his education was classical and in Italian, but also because there did not exist any poetic works written in the demotic dialect that would have served as direct models. However, the fact that his education in Greek was minimal kept him free of any scholarly influences that might have led him to write in Katharebusa, a purist language formulated as a simpler form of ancient Greek. Instead, he wrote in the language of the common people of his native island. In order to ameliorate his language skills, he started studying methodically demotic songs, the works of earlier Heptanesian poems, or Solomiki Pites, and popular and Cretan literature that at that time constituted the best examples of the use of the demotic dialect in modern Greek literature. The result was the first extensive body of literature written in demotic, a move whose influence on subsequent writers cannot be overstated. Here is the best known poem from that period, Ixanthula, The Little Blonde Girl. A sweet farewell poem. It was set to music by Nikolaos Manzaros, the great Corfiot composer of later hymn Liberty Fame. Here is the poem in its music, sung by Aliki Kajalovic. Solomos fell in love with women, but in pure romantic tradition, those women always remained for him ideal forms that were never approached in flesh, so that these relations were never consummated. 
Solomos' encounter with Spiridon Trikoupis in 1822 was a turning point, point in his writing. Mesolonghi born Spiridon Trikoupis was to become a major political figure in independent Greece a few years later. Trikoupis visited Zakynthos in 1822, invited by Lord Guilford, a Philhellene British, British administrator who established the Ionian Academy on Corfu in 1824, the first university on Greek soil. So Lomos' fame on the island was already widespread, and Trikoupis wished to meet him. When they met, Solomos read to him the Ode to the First Mass, written in Italian. Impressed by Solomos's poetic skills, Trikoupis stated, Your poetic aptitude reserves for you a select place on the Italian Parnassus. But the first places there are already taken. The Greek Parnassus does not yet have its Dante. The first important turning point in the Greek works of Solomos was the hymn to liberty. Directly inspired by the Greek Revolution of 1821, the poem was completed in May 1823. The 158 four-verse stanzas of the poem were first